Hi, I'm Jan Cuny. I work at the National Science Foundation where I lead their efforts on broadening participation and education in computing. Underrepresentation in the IT workforce has got a lot of attention recently, but it's not new. It's been a very long-standing problem. Women, African Americans, Hispanic, Native Americans, persons with disabilities all participate in computing at very low rate. And if you take all those groups together, it's not a small niche group. It's 70 percent of our population. And that 70 percent is not getting the skills that they need to fully participate in the 21st century careers and 21st century activities. Computing is everywhere. It's transforming our society. It's changing the way we work. It's changing the way we play. It's changing the way we acquire and analyze data. It's changing the way we educate people. It's changing the way we provide health care. And it's changing the way we approach science and engineering. And by allowing underrepresentation in computing to go unchecked, what we're doing is deciding a priori who is going to be able to solve these problems, who will and who will not be able to chart the directions for technology of the future, who will or will not be prepared for the jobs of the future. It's really an equity issue. It's an important equity issue of our time. It's an economic issue, too. We'll need the talents, creativity, and innovation of all segments of our society if we're going to continue to lead what's become a very competitive global market. Underrepresentation in computing starts early. It starts way before the workforce and probably even before college. And looking just at gender for the moment, women currently receive something less than 20 percent of the degrees in computer science, which is down from 38 percent just a few decades ago. It's the only science that's lost women uh, at that kind of significant rate. But the damage is done even before students reach college. If you look just at the freshmen as they enter college, the percentage of women saying that they're interested or intending to major in computer science is down 70 percent since the 80s. That's a huge loss. So clearly if we're going to intervene and change things about broadening participation and underrepresentation, it's going to have to happen much earlier than college. So at the National Science Foundation, we've been funding efforts to engage kids, and what we found is that it's really easy to engage kids, all kids, even very young kids, kids in middle school or kids in elementary school even, in computing because we do such cool stuff. We have robotics, we have um, animation systems, we have e-textiles, we have whole bunches of interactive technologies that kids can get excited about. But engagement alone isn't enough. We have to build the capacity of kids. We have to teach them things. We have to show them the basic concepts of computational thinking and computational problem solving. And even more important, we have to show them why this is relevant to their lives and what, is, how, what kind of empowerment it will bring to their lives. Um, but engagement alone isn't enough. There are two other things we have to do. We have to build capacity. We have to show kids uh, the basic concepts of computing and computational approaches to problems, and then the second thing that we have to do is we have to make this relevant to their lives. We have to show them that computation is empowering and relevant to the interests and the careers that they might want to pursue. Basically, we have to put them on a path forward. Right now, that path forward is blocked for most students at high school. Right now, most high schools do not teach computer science. In fact, we teach less computer science in high school now than we did uh, 20 years ago. That's pretty astounding, actually. Only 19 percent of the students in the United States take computer science classes. And I'm not talking about courses that teach kids how to keyboard and how to use office products like uh, Word or PowerPoint. There are plenty of those courses around. What I'm talking about is courses that teach kids not just to be users of technology, but give them the opportunity to become creators of technology. Not everyone needs to be a software engineer, but everyone needs to understand the basics of computation and computational approaches. Everyone will need to be able to bend or adapt computation to their own ends. So students will need to be able to take computer science in high school. It disproportionately affects women because they don't see any counter to the popular uh, misconceptions about computing, that it's only for geeky guys who don't have any social skills, that it's not a creative activity, and that it has no societal impact. These are all false statements, but there's nowhere that kids are told that in school. It affects minorities disproportionately because they are disproportionately in low-resource schools that don't offer computer science of any kind at all. 
So to fix the diversity problem, we're going to have to fix the computer science in high school problem. NSF has set out to do that, to catalyze that fix by creating an evidence-based set of uh, foundations that schools can build on if they choose to offer computer science. We started by funding the development of two new courses. The first one is an introductory co course called Exploring Computer Science. The second one is a brand new AP course that's called uh, AP CS Principles. Both of these courses were designed to be rigorous academic courses and they were designed to engage all kids. They were both designed with the idea of equity from the very beginning. Both cover programming, but they're not programming centric. They also cover uh, basic elements of algorithm and software design, computational problem solving, the potential transformative applications across a lot of domains, and ethics issues of ethics and social uh, impact. These courses are already being piloted and adapted in courses across the country, hundreds of courses, and many of them are getting representative numbers of women and minorities, or at least improving uh, in that domain. NSF is also currently funding projects that are looking at ways to accommodate various disabilities for students with disabilities in those courses. But even great curriculum isn't enough. We're also going to need great teachers. Most schools will not have computer science teachers, so our teachers will come from other disciplines. They'll be math teachers or science teachers or um, they'll be technology teachers or business teachers and we'll have to provide them with a significant amount of pre-service and in-service preparation and so ongoing support as they teach these courses. To date, NSF has funded 20 projects that look at developing models of professional development that could be scaled and used by school districts across the country who want to adopt these courses. But to reach all schools and to reach all school districts, it's going to require a much larger effort. That's going to have to be uh, a national movement. The National Center for Women in Information and Technology, NCWIT, and the Association for Computing Machinery, ACM, have both been partners since the very beginning. Code.org has joined recently with its amazing prowess in marketing and its hour of code and its ability to attract substantial funding. It's really been able to change the conversation. Uh, a lot of students, parents, teachers, school boards, officials have stepped up and really interested in getting computer science into their schools and Code.org is helping that to happen. In addition, NSF has partnered with organizations that typically provide help with STEM education across the country, such as Project Lead the Way, Teach for America, or the National Math and Science Initiative, NIMSI. These organizations all have sustained efforts that get STEM into school, and they're adding computer science to their portfolios. NSF is also partnering with uh, foundations like CSNYC and MassKen to do local support for teachers in their own areas. Hundreds of people, including teachers, faculty, parents, IT professionals, have all joined this effort, giving it their enthusiasm and their energy and their time. IT companies and foundations have donated uh, funding and support, but there's a lot more to do. So I'd like to ask everyone to join this effort by advocating for computer science in your local schools. You'll be helping to diversify computing, and you'll be helping to ensure that every student today has the opportunity to apply their talents and creativity in the computationally enabled future of tomorrow.